Hi, I'm Steve Hines from Peak XV Fitness. Do you want to lose weight, keep it off and feel great? Well, this information's for you. With the nation getting ever fatter and the burden this will have on our health and our economy, the government and healthcare professionals alike are urging us to lose weight and become more active. But there are so many different diet books and weight loss programs on the market and so much conflicting information in the press that it can be sometimes quite confusing about what is the right thing to do. From an evolutional perspective, humans are designed to be lean, muscular and highly active. Just look at animals in their natural environment where there is no human interaction. You will very rarely see overweight animals, except for those that go into hibernation for example, and you'll never see obese animals. Alarmingly, the health of the House of Commons Health Committee report on obesity estimated the economic cost to the nation of people becoming overweight and obese to be between 6.6 .6 and 7.4 billion pounds. It's astounding. At a time where our economic future looks bleak, we need to realise that it's no longer acceptable to let ourselves become overweight or obese nor is it acceptable to put this responsibility of our health onto others, such as the government or the National Health Service. We need to take responsibility for the decisions that we make in our lives, including this, the decisions that affect our health. Now, of course, there are genetic and environmental factors that contribute to our body shape and to our health, but nobody gets fat from just having bad genes. People only get fat from what they choose to eat on a daily basis and from the choice of whether to exercise or to sit on their house at home. Well, what's wrong with being a little bit fat anyway? Fat is not just an unsightly inert substance that sits on your love handle or your bingo wings and your muffin top. It doesn't just serve as a reservoir of energy to be called upon when it's needed. Fat is a metabolic tissue that can cause all manner of things to happen in your body. Fat cells release the hormone leptin that serves as a signal for energy sufficiency. Leptin levels decline with calorie restriction and with weight loss and normal weight and they rise above normal levels with weight gain and obesity. Obesity can lead to leptin resistance, much like insulin resistance, where leptin can no longer tell the brain that you're full and this can lead to problems where you just can't stop eating and continually gain weight. Leptin also interacts with other hormones such as stress hormones and, and thyroid hormones. It modulates the immune system and it aids bone formation. So disrupted leptin levels through obesity can affect how a myriad of hormones work. It can disrupt your immune system and it can affect your bone health. Now, Fat cells also become infiltrated with a high level of immune cells that release inflammatory chemicals, disrupting the uptake of sugar and burning of fat in liver cells and contributing to insulin resistance, the, type, uh, the onset of type 2 diabetes and narrowing of your arteries. Fat cells also release chemicals that clot your blood, increase your blood pressure, convert inactive stress hormones into active stress hormones and they contribute to the conditions such as hypertension, stroke, cardiovascular disease and, and PCOS. Fat cells also convert male hormones into female hormones. Now this may be a good thing if you're a postmenopausal woman as it provides your body with a source of estrogen but this isn't a good thing if you're a premenopausal woman who presumably has normal levels of estrogen nor is it a good thing for a man making you, uh, making you more feminine and this excess of estrogen has been linked with conditions such as fibroids, endometriosis, ovarian cancer in women and also breast cancer in women but also breast cancer in men now this was unheard of 10 years ago, but more men now are getting breast cancer. So join me in this next installment where I'm going to tell you how you can identify your if you're at risk of, of some of these diseases and how you can monitor your weight loss.